Hello. Welcome to Daily Devotions. A lowly pastor was posted to a church in a rural community. And he went to visit members of the congregation. As he went through the list he came to one woman. He inquired why she had stopped coming to church. To which she replied, I have tried my best to please God. But I am afraid my past life and my current deeds will never let God accept me. The pastor nodded and said, I agree with you, he will never accept you. The woman was astonished and looked at the pastor. The pastor stared at her and continued, God will never accept you in this state. But God has accepted his son, Jesus Christ. And so if you accept Jesus by faith, then you will find God's acceptance which you desire. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your son and for his finished work on the cross. There are times when we feel unworthy, when we feel you have given up on us. We have been deceived into thinking that somehow we can earn acceptance in your eyes when we do good or live good or love our neighbor as ourselves. We thank you that in Christ, you have made us acceptable in your sight. Open our hearts and our minds to the truth of your word. And the truth is that you, O Lord, accept all who accept your Son by grace through faith. In your beloved Son we are risen, we are ascended, and we are seated on high. Hallelujah! Amen. Before we continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. Paul says to the church in Ephesus, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6. The phrase, accepted in the beloved, is the most welcome statement in the ears of every believer. It is a stamp of approval. When you know you are accepted by God, then you know you will definitely hear these words when you meet Christ. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. But how do we become accepted in the beloved? The moment we repent and believe in Jesus Christ, that same moment God makes us completely and fully accepted in the beloved Jesus Christ, who is his beloved son, in whom he is well pleased, Matthew chapter 3 verse 17. So we see that God is pleased with his son and we are in the son. So then God is well pleased with us. The dictionary says to be accepted, means to receive willingly, to regard with approval, to value, to take pleasure in or to receive with favor. So, in essence, Paul is telling us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 that God has accepted us willingly, with approval, with value, with esteem, and with delight. And he accepts us not because we have in any way merited his approval but because his beloved paid the price in full for our approval. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. John chapter 19 verse 30. This glorious truth, it is finished, became a reality for us. The moment we were justified, declared righteous, as a gift by his grace through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus, Romans chapter 3 verse 24. The very moment we are justified, we are transferred from our former position in Adam to our new, eternal position in Christ, the Beloved, in whom we are unconditionally accepted by the Father. That is why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. And again in 1 Corinthians 15.22, for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. No one shall stand accepted before God outside of Christ. If we are inside Christ we shall always be accepted by God. When we step outside Christ, we shall never be accepted by God. For it is only when we are clothed in Christ's righteousness that we become accepted by the Father. Because outside of Christ, we are clothed in our own righteousness and that is like filthy rags before God. It is unacceptable before God. The prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, We have all become like one who is unclean. 
and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. Close your eyes for a moment. Do you believe? How great a love the Father has bestowed on you. So that now in the Beloved you are so near and dear to God's heart. That he calls you his Beloved. Paul hammered this truth when he addressed the church in Rome. In Romans chapter 1 verse 7 he says, To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And to the church in Thessalonica, he writes, For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, 1 Thessalonians 1-4. Think about it. God loves you the same way he loves his beloved son. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 verse 23. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me, and love them even as you loved me. Solomon expresses this when he says in Psalms 2.16. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He grazes among the lilies. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone tell you that you are not accepted by God because you strayed into sin, or that you are more accepted because of your good behavior, or your good works. The truth is that our sins disrupt our fellowship and communion with God, and hence calls for his discipline. But they do not disrupt our union with his Son, in whom we are eternally accepted. Spurgeon once said, and I am paraphrasing here, I may not be accepted by my fellow man, they may not even acknowledge me. I may not even be accepted by myself. I may see myself as an unworthy sinner. But in the Beloved, whilst I am clothed with his righteousness, and standing in his person, as a member of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, I am accepted in the Beloved. That is the truth that should sink into your soul. The heavens declare in Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might, and honor and glory and blessing. When we enter the new covenant in his blood, Jesus, the worthy one, becomes our worth. It is an unbreakable union. We become perfectly and completely identified with the beloved Son of God. Do not wrestle with doubt as concerns your worth. You are worthy, because by grace through faith, you are in a covenant with the Bridegroom, Christ Jesus, the Worthy One. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Luke chapter 22 verse 20. By faith we are betrothed to Christ, we are married to him. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. For I betrothed you to one husband. So that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. This relationship with Christ changes your position. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself up for me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Our position in Christ is what makes us acceptable in God's eyes. We will never be accepted by God based on our works. It is only when we rest in the eternal truth of the finished work, and the worth of Christ, the worthy one. It is the work and the worth of Christ, that has made us accepted in the Beloved. And because we are accepted, we are no longer under condemnation, and nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the Beloved, no condemnation, no separation, that is the truth that should fill our hearts and motivate us, knowing that whatever we do, we are loved because Christ's love controls us. Let us pray. Lord, we are your beloved in Christ. You have great pleasure towards us. You take delight in us. We are acceptable in your sight. Christ was forsaken by you, so that we who are in him may be accepted in the Son. Such love is beyond our understanding. We thank you. We bless your holy name. Be exalted over all the earth. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.